Perfect. Excellent. Well, thanks everybody for joining us tonight. My name is Paul Snow. Uh, I'm part of the team at YouTube here in Los Angeles. And good night. We're good. We're good. We have some gentlemen up here uh, as well that deserve much more clapping than I do. So uh, I don't want to clap. All right. Well, so we'll uh, you can do the Arsenio hoop for him instead. So uh, we'll make sure uh, make sure you do that. So let me let me go down the line. Um, Andre Royo's here uh, visiting us as well as David Oyello. We also have Eli Kelly. We have a guy named Rick McCollin as well. And we've just had the opportunity. <laughs> so welcome to Los Angeles. Welcome to Google Los Angeles. We've just had the opportunity to, to screen Red Tails, an amazing movie. Uh, we have a few questions that we're going to start out with about the movie and about your experience making it. But then we have an audience here that's anxious to ask you questions as well. All right. So you guys ready? Yeah. So first off, uh, for those that haven't seen the movie yet, um, it's about the Tuskegee Airmen. We'd love to hear a little bit about your guys' experience <laughs> and how you first uh, heard about the Tuskegee Airmen. Uh, well, for me personally, my first encounter uh, of the Tuskegee Airmen was reading the script for Red Tails. And, um, you know, uh, that in and of itself is something I'm ashamed to say, considering how incredible these guys were and, and what they did. Um, but at least I have the excuse of being British. Um, uh, but when I, when I, when I, uh, <laughs> you just said, but I'm still black. Sure. Can you believe? You're right. I am still black. I am still ashamed. Thank you. Um, but uh, you know, when when I, when I read the script and when I started doing research around the subject matter. Uh, what I was shocked to find is that a lot of uh, Americans, both white and black, didn't know either. And that's when it became a real kind of obsession of mine to be both part of telling the story and to, to, to you know, educate people about who they were. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I grew up in a very, very small town called LaGrange, Georgia, which is about 45 miles southeast of Tuskegee. So there is a very, very rich heritage there. Um, a lot of the airmen have said that they used to fly over uh, where I grew up. And a as we were you know, maturing as children, these stories of their bravery would always be told to us um, as inspiration. So it was very, very near and dear to me um, already. Uh, I first heard, of the, I, I had never heard of the Tuskegee Airmen until 1989, and George, a very good friend of George Lucas's, had told him the story, and uh, he loved, he loved battles, he loved air uh, sequences, he had used them in Star Wars, the original Star Wars, and he was, the minute he heard the story, and the minute he told it to me, this was 89 for me, and he had started about a year before, um, it was a, like a no-brainer, because it was just such a, a fantastic story about, uh, you know, people overcoming the most extraordinary odds, but also it was an action adventure story. It had a lot of history. And one of the biggest problems that took us so long um, to, for him to actually come up with a way to make it is it was so big. It was, there was the Tuskegee part, which was an extraordinary story of unbelievable racism and tragedy part of American history. Then there was this um, the great part of the guys finally getting the shot, the chance that they'd always yearned for. And then there was also, of course, when they came back and were treated like absolute, can we swear? <laughs> sure. She go for it. Treated badly. Incredibly. Oh, sorry. <laughs> All the kids like did. Treated very badly. Very badly. Movement. And so there are these three big, big stories. So, um, but it was like, oh my God, this is just such a fantastic idea. This is such a fantastic story. We never thought we'd go through the pain and uh, uh, trying to get it made for this long. But uh, finally, you know, it, was, it was worth it for us. Excellent. So you guys have been out talking to the public about the movie. What's been your experience that, around their awareness of the Tuskegee Airmen? Well, I mean, sorry, Rick. I mean, you know, now having seen the, the movie, um, you know, uh, uh, it's, some of it is anger, some of it is sadness that it's, why now do, do we, we know about this? Especially for, you know, young black people. That, you know, I, I, we, we, we got a letter the other day um, from a school that had had, had attended a screening, and and they were they were angry that it wasn't 
part of the curriculum um, and that it was kind of a footnote you know in terms of the things they get to learn because at the end of the day you know what what we do with with red tails that I'm so happy about is we celebrate them as heroes we don't you know we're, we're not uh, the, the film isn't about the the browbeaten black man which is so much of what you can see in these kind of movies in, in, in a sense uh, often that's what's portrayed but these guys you know when we one of the privileges for us was um, getting to be with Roscoe Brown getting to be with Lee Archer getting to be with Bill Holloman some of some of the airmen who were exemplary uh, as Tuskegee Airmen during the Second World War and um, you know they they never let the prejudice they never let the obstacles they faced be the thing that stopped them from doing what they wanted to do which was to both save the world from you know a, a dictatorship and show themselves worthy of respect back home and show themselves to be patriotic uh, Americans and they did not let the prejudice stop them so you know this is something that as people are, are, are getting to see that in the film that there there is a, a combination of celebration anger and sadness that it has taken this long for them to be celebrated in this way in watching the movie, there was a, a pretty amazing bond in between the cast. I heard some rumors about a, a boot camp or, or something else that was done that maybe helped forge some of those bonds before filming started. That was the best part for me, watching. <laughs> I still want to choke you. <laughs> for those that had to go through it and those that watched others go through it, you want to tell us a little bit about what you did? I personally went through boot camp, and before meeting George, Lucas, uh, and, and Rick, I hated them <laughs> because they put us through this. Uh, when I tell you it was, it was a tremendous uh, mental struggle, physical struggle, uh, spiritual struggle, because we wanted to kill everybody that we saw. And the worst part about it was where it was set up. It was set up in, a, in an abandoned warehouse uh, in the winter of Prague, the Czech Republic. So there's snow everywhere. This warehouse has no heat. Uh, nothing is modern about this. It was how many square foot? It was probably about. It's about four or five thousand square feet, but it was also no windows. No, 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 no. It was that warehouse was four or five thousand square foot. The place we slept oh, in was no, a closet. No, 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 no. It was like eight, it was eight people. The the beds the beds were um, there was about a, a foot's length between each bed. Um, we were we woke up. Our alarm clock was M eighties. Um, shotgun rifles, uh, simulations. We had uh, just impromptu nine mile hikes in the middle of the night. Uh, people fell out, people cried. Uh, Elijah cried. No, I didn't cry. <laughs> <laughs> there's, a lot of, there's a lot of precipitation in, in the Czech, the Czech Republic at that time of the year, David. <laughs> he cried. Uh, um, but it, it, was, it was one of those experiences where it was genius because they set it up where, as the Tuskegee Airmen had the same situation, they only had each other. You know, so there was a bonding experience that you knew when those bombs went off that the person right next to you was going to have your back regardless of what went down. And that was kind of the trajectory of how the bond got started because we knew that, listen, this was, they set us up literally in 1940. The music was period, the food was period, um, the way we had to interact with it, there was no social media, no cell phones, no anything um, for over a week. And uh, that bond, it just set us up for not only being brothers for the duration of the movie, but for a lifetime in my opinion. And also, you know, we were, we were very aware that we were being afforded a completely unique uh, opportunity. Um, I, I defy you to find a movie of this scale with a, you know, almost entirely African-American cast um, where we are the center of the story. You know, it's not told through a white person's perspective or a white character, you know, like Glory did or uh, like, you know, The, the Help did or the, the Last King of Scotland did or Blood Diamond did. You know, the, the way Hollywood tells black stories is to do it through the prism of a, a, white, a white perspective. And so we were 
you know, this is the, the, the genius of George and, and why we are eternally indebted to George is that like he did with American Graffiti, he took a bunch of unknowns and just went and did it anyway. Like, you know, with Star Wars, when no one was making sci-fi at that time, he did it anyway. He did that with, with, with us. You know, no one was going to make this movie with a bunch of uh, no-name actors, so to speak. I mean, Cuba and Terence are, are a different matter, but largely the, the, the film centers around these pilots. And uh, so we were very, very cognizant of, of, the, of the privilege of getting to do this. So that was very bonding as well. That's great. Yeah, it was cool. It was cool to walk in. I missed the boot camp, me and Method Man. Oh, thank God. Man. Thank God. Thank God we were the mechanics. We yeah, had to do all that boot camp. <laughs> <laughs> but as an actor, going, to, you know, going onto the set and hanging out with the guys when we got there, you know, it was unique to see these guys all come together every morning. They were like a family. It wasn't like people were awful, you know, you go to other sets, actors are doing it then, they're on Facebook, they're not really as, as together as these guys were every morning at the hotel, eating together, working out together, going for a run. I took, you know, I took notice of that. I joined in on the run. Me and uh, Meth Man, you know, joined you in on the run. You joined in on the run. Meth Man. Did, well, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you joined in and thought about it. Yeah. <laughs> he made a rhyme about it. It was really it was special. But he forgot his lighter for a cigarette. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's messed up. But it was, it, was, it was cool to see these guys. It was, cool to, it was cool to see these guys connected like that. You could feel the bond was there. And they did other things, like take us up on the B-51s. Yeah. Yeah. We all went up on that, and that was, you know, horrific. And scary. <laughs> so we de we definitely had experiences that they could put us into the moment that we don't you know you don't really get in films. Excellent, thanks. So we actually have a, a few youth groups with us today um, from More Fire Nation, and we've got More Fire Nation. There we go. Yeah. And we've got Tomorrow's Aeronautical Museum here as well. So aeronauticals. <laughs> <laughs> I am so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> We've come now so far. We We've come so it. far. <laughs> and now we go backwards. Uh, yeah. So these, you know, these youths, if somebody asked them in a year, when did they hear about the Tuskegee Airmen, they'll have a very different answer than what you had at the beginning of this conversation. So well, that's, what, that's what it's about. I, th I think essentially there are, there are minorities um, in the United States us as a culture right now, I feel like my generation is fixated on um, fame. Fame without works, meaning it happens overnight. Um, the opportunities that we're granted, the opportunities that Andre, David, myself, um, even Rick, um, we fought for everything that we've gotten. Um, and for minorities, my, my feeling, my vision for uh, these kids are to understand that these are the shoulders that you stand on. Um, Michael Jordan, he's amazing. Uh, Tiger Woods is amazing. LeBron James is amazing. Yeah. These guys are phenomenal. But to actually see these, see these men, to see these modern day superheroes, um, I always like to say the only thing to, that separated them from being a Superman or, or a Batman or a Spider-Man was their mortality. Um, they went up, they fought, they saved the world. It's just as simple as that. And for them to see that, for them to see someone that looks like them do that is, you, you, can't, you can't buy that type of inspiration. That's lifelong inspiration. That's something that no one can really verbally instill in you. It's something that you have to see. And I think that with this movie, uh, they were able to see that. And from what I've seen across the country, and hopefully we'll continue to see around the world, is that kids of, of all colors uh, will get inspired to see that type of, of, of bravery. Excellent. Well, thanks. Well, let me open it up. I know, I know there's questions in the audience, both from the young people that are here as, as well as the rest of the audience. So we have a microphone we'll pass around. To, if you have a question, raise your hand. We're not leaving this room till 1 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> uh, I can say that uh, one of the things I find encouraging is that although I think some of the older generations haven't heard the story of uh, Tuskegee Airmen, I think at least starting with uh, my generation, I think it's something that's starting to be taught a lot more in schools. I mean, I grew up in Tennessee, which is not exactly the most forward thinking of uh, places, but even still, I remember I'm hearing right, about the Tuskegee Airmen um, several times throughout middle school and high school. Uh, but I'm also curious to hear how you guys think this will be received by the international community, especially you, David, um, as a Brit, just because it is a, although a very American story, it is also something that is 
very unique to um, just on a human level uh, and the level of uh, world history? Well, I think one of, one of the things that drew George to, to wanting to make it is he recognized the universal truth in, in terms of what, <coughs> what these men did. We all face obstacles, um, you know, whether it's bullying at school, whether it's being a woman, whether it's being black or, you know, any, any sort of minority or just being alive on earth today, you know, you face obstacles. And the great thing about <clears throat> the story from a universal point of view is, like I've said before, is that they didn't dwell on the negative. They uh, knew what they had by way of talent. They worked hard on it. And they went out and did their best every single time. And also, the universal truth is that you know, there's a, a, a beautiful biblical quote, which is, uh, greater love hath no man than to lay his life down for his friend. And that, to me, is the definition of love. You know, to be pre pre to be prepared to, to lay down your life for another person, for your country, for your family. If we all had that to some degree within us, you know, I, I I am absolutely certain the world would be a better place. And that's why so often you uh, you know the the, the 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 war years are called the, the great generation or the finest generation. You know, because that was a time where just because of the circumstances, these people had to put their lives on the line for truth, for justice, and for their countries, for the things that really mean so much. And you know what Elijah is alluding to in terms of the generation we live in now is that those kind of pressures are certainly not put on you know, Western youth. They're, they're not. You know, we are free to be obsessed with ourselves, with our technology, with what we look like, and with the idea of fame, because there isn't that pressure placed upon us to you know, look out for our fellow man. And so that, I think, is the universal truth within Red Tails that I hope that anyone uh, alive today would see, regardless of whether you're American or black or, or otherwise. OK, I have one question. Uh, was it fun when you were pretty boy? <laughs> <laughs> I got a little dig on you. <laughs> you got lucky with that kid. Huh? Uh, that's oh, that's a great question. Um, you know what? You, you know, uh, what the. <laughs> great, yeah, that's a good question. Good question. <laughs> it is a good question. No, I mean, honestly, this is one of the great things about being an actor is that, you know, as you guys know, as you, you, those of you here who are kids, you know, going around your house going, wow, wow, you know, you do that anyway. You know, you, no one has to be paying you to do that. <laughs> we, like, literally got paid. Literally. I didn't do that. I didn't do that. He cried and did da 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 as well. Because you've got to tell the people the truth. Listen, the man, truth will set you free. I like mean, will, but let, let me let us. Let's it's let's okay. They'll still think you're cool. Um, <laughs> but but literally, because we had to. <laughs> because obviously we weren't out there flying, we were in a, we were in a gimbal. So it's a section of the plane that's on poles that you know is being manipulated by these guys. And because we had to learn each battle, so you had to learn which plane was going where, where you were looking at any given time, which is really mind numbing, by the way. But it was so much fun because literally we were in there, and someone off camera was going, "Pretty boys coming at you!" <laughs> boom, boom, boom! <laughs> So every time you see me going Whoa, like that, it's because Nate Parker is literally sat down there going, look to your right, Whoa. here he comes again, Whoa. So the answer, to, the answer to your question is, it was great fun. Pretty Boy wasn't actually there, but visualizing him and getting to shoot at him and getting to do the trick where I do the flip and all of that, I mean, really, I couldn't believe that I was going home to a paycheck after a day like that. So um, yeah, it was great fun. When Deacon was going down on this plane, what would go through your mind if you knew you was going to die? or? You'll be in really bad condition if you survive. Oh wow! 
And so you're heavy duty. These kids are real smart, yeah. It is heavy duty. Well, I mean, the, the first thing, the first thing that you do, obviously, is wet yourself. I don't, I don't know. For, for, for me, for me, that a lot of things flashes in in your life. I feel like for a character like Deke. Um, you know, with his spiritual, with his spirituality, he would probably think about you know what he's left on earth, what kind of example that he's left to the people around him, um, the family that he's leaving. Um, for me personally, I would just want to be fulfilled in everything that God had called me to do. Um, death is, I can be very candid. It's it's not something I look forward to. I'm terrified just of the fact of. Um, you know, losing life. Nobody knows what that what that entails. But I think that what is inspired by the possibilities of that is to be as great as you can while you have life. And so that that transition is as easy as it can be, uh, knowing that you've done everything that you could for everybody that you can while you're here on Earth. At this moment, it was a great moment. That was an awesome word. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for making this film. All my kids are so grateful. Uh, just, I'm speaking on behalf of More Fire Nation. Um, they're just really glad to tell them actually die in the film. <laughs> they're really alive, so that was a lot of questions that they were having on the way here. Uh, did they really die? No, they didn't. They're going <laughs> to. Before they crashed, as soon as like a second before they hit the ground, how did the pilot get out and survive? Oh, how did they actually oh, get out? I think what he's saying is the, the special effects look so real. How did... That they're convinced oh, I that see. those airplanes I really crashed. crashed. Yeah, yeah. And if those airplanes actually crashed, how do you get the act out of there? <laughs> how did you get out of there? Oh, oh. there were many times when I wanted to <laughs> play. <laughs> they were only four feet off the ground, so it was very. I only have like 60 degree burn. I mean, I'm still, I'm still suffering, man. It's hard out there for a pilot. Um, <laughs> oh man. Well, that means we did our job well. That you, you think that we were actually, uh, we were actually in. I was never anywhere near an explosion, and uh, that, that's that's where the joy of all the brrr, bang bang bang. That's where it would have ended. <laughs> if I was, if right for the crash. Yeah, 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 yeah. Blow that up. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. got yeah. yeah, craft service eating Twizzlers. So that that was <laughs> that was all make believe. One of the great things uh, about doing this film with Rick and George and Lucasfilm is that they also uh, own a company called ILM, Industrial Lights and Magic, uh, who are some of the best in the world at computer-generated imagery. So they make that, love, love that stuff look so real that when, you, when I watched the movie, I was like, the first time I watched the movie, and I, I'm going to admit this now, I got choked up about my own death. <laughs> <laughs> That's how real. I was sitting behind him. I was behind him. Elijah, didn't I die really well? Yeah, I said, oh, what's right? Damn. Oh, 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 it was a fun. Oh, that's my number two. Oh, that's my number two. No, seriously, I had like a lump in my throat. I was like, oh, that's my number two. No, seriously, I had like a lump in my throat. I was like, um, and that's a testament to the great work you guys do. I so. remember the first time I sent you the trailer. Do you remember? Oh, that? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I watched it with my kids. Can you imagine? I have, like, I have three sons. I have a 10-year-old, a 7-year-old, and a 3-year-old. Can you understand how much of a hero I am in my house? <laughs> when I show them that trailer, <coughs> that's my dad. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the best, the best. Anyway, I don't think we answered your question, but it was fun anyway. <laughs> After realizing what the Tuskegee Airmen meant and what they did, as you been asked to play the character of a Tuskegee Airmen, how did that feel for you? Uh, well, now you have to keep in mind that these guys, we, we got to meet these men, these amazing men who are as sharp, as smart, and as tactful as they are now, as they were then. 
So you're, you're, you're coming up to them every day, and, and literally Roscoe Brown will come up to you and look at you. We didn't wear our jackets like this. <laughs> there you go. And they have the, the strongest, like, grandfather hands that just grip you in ways that you don't understand. And, and they're like 89, 90 years old. So, so the, 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 greatest thing, the greatest thing about it is you're getting firsthand information of how to portray them. The most frightening thing is, if you don't do it right, those grapple hooks will come out of nowhere <laughs> and just grab you and, and, and tell you what you're doing right or what you're doing wrong. But they have this, uh, this incredible quote. I don't want to misquote it, but it, it, it deals with um, excellence. Uh, Roscoe Brown always says that excellence is the only answer to, uh, what is it, ignorance or? or ignorance and mediocrity. Yeah, excellence is the answer to ignorance and, and, and mediocrity. So that was the, the, the format and the equation that they preach to us all the time. Just be excellent. You're doing great. Just be excellent. Just be excellent. Just be excellent. Um, through adversity to the stars. That's how we got to the point to deliver a film like Red Tails that we did. And more than anything, it was just an honor for them to be able to, to teach us. Like we had an incredible director in Anthony Hemingway. Um, the, the creative side with, with Rick and George as well, but to, to know that these heroes that you're portraying are right behind camera rooting for you was, you know, the feeling was, is, is unparalleled. Yeah, it was a great, it was a great responsibility and pride. I, my, my remembrance of being at the ranch with a the, the couple of Tuskegee Airmen, <laughs> and we were asking them questions on, what'd you do here? What'd you think about this? And one of the cats asked them, hey, how'd you say hi to somebody? Did you give them dap? Did you give them a hand? Did you bump their shoulders? And this dude was like, no, we walked up, we shook their hand, <laughs> and we moved on. <laughs> Grow up. And it was just like, everybody started sitting there like, oh, shit, it's over <laughs> My fault, my fault. And you know, like Elijah said, they were so proud of their story being told, it made us feel so proud that we were allowed to tell their story. And the, the, the two together, it was just, you know, it was memorable. It was a fantastic experience. But, you know, we also learned that they're show offs as well. Well, they, they got the right I mean, They got the right to. Like, I did so many interviews with Roscoe, where, especially if it was a pretty young lady who go, you know where lightning blows up the train? That was me. <laughs> <laughs> I did that. <laughs> Get the record straight. So I was, I was like, I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I flew so low, I bent my wing. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, R -r 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 yeah, I, you, you know. You've been waiting so. a long time to say it. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like, you guys think this is a spectacle to see them together uh, right now? Yeah, right. It's hey, like you, a 91-year-old telling an 89-year-old to shut up because they're too young to talk. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like that type of stuff. It's, Literally. You know, people telling lies about who dated Lena Horne. It, that's the type of things that go on. I right? danced with her all night. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. You didn't. You didn't. You didn't. You didn't. You didn't dance with Lena Horne. I could not dance with her. Okay. So we probably have time for one or two more questions. Well, we're cool. So it's coming How did you feel when you had to fix the P 51D Mustang? I, I felt incompetent. I felt like I didn't. I felt like I didn't know what I was doing. I mean, we, again, they give us a lot of research. We, we was at an air museum, Plane of, Plane of Fame, and I dealt with some mechanics, and they they walked me around it, taught me, gave me big, big, you know, books on how to do it. And there's no way in hell I could learn it that quick before we shot. But you know, it wasn't really about the plan as much as it was, it was about somebody else's life. If I don't do this plan right it might cost my fellow man his death. So it was very personal to really go through that plane and be very precise on every part of the plane to make sure it worked well for the pilot. Which is why I died, because he didn't know. <laughs> Lightning, you go behind that jet, I told you what. Um, how did it feel like being a Tuskegee Airman? Did it feel like you were like a kid again playing make-believe? Like it, like Elijah said, you know, they were heroes. They flew, they saved the world, they were young, uh, you know, and um, it, was, uh, it was just, it was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity and one that we will take to our, to our graves. I mean, one of the highlights for us was uh, we got to take the film to the White House. Mm -hmm. and. Um, 
we got to screen it for uh, you know to, to screen it for the president and 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 first, lady. and first lady and what was what was so incredible was we had a tour of of the white house before we showed it to them and <clears throat> you know the white house with all that history with all these you know fusty white men and wigs and and things like that through the years and rick and george i cannot believe you just said that <laughs> 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 the movie is um, over we already got <laughs> we got names <laughs> we got the movie yeah. um, but it was just so incredible to be in that in that in that building with all that history, both negative and positive, and then to be standing in a room waiting for the president and for this cool guy to come in and go, how y'all doing? <laughs> and you're like, did, was that the president? Yeah. I mean, you know, and he walked in and Michelle Obama's giving hugs and, you know, the real Tuskegee Airmen with, and everywhere you look, it was just black faces. And I, you, could, you could almost see those paintings going, what? <laughs> He's <laughs> melting. I'm melting. I'm melting. What are they doing? I see the kid. I didn't mean that far. I didn't mean that far. So you know, to get to do the movie and then to and get to see the. Popcorn. I know. And then the little cookies, little plain cookies in the White House. And M and M's. And, 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 and everything. Yeah, it was incredible. So you know, the combination of getting to play uh, the, those men, getting to see them honored at the White House, being there while they're um, having this movie come out while there's an African American president. It's just like stuff you will tell your grandkids, you will take to your grave. It was just been the most incredible experience. Yo, all, all my little brothers, like this is, this is not only a movie, this is a movement. This is something that we want you guys to take and cherish for the rest of your lives. Like you're a part of this as well as us because we did this for and with you guys. Every day that we did this film, we had people like you in mind. And I would have never knew that we would have got to take the film to, you know, to the White House. One That's of the best things that, that has happened to me during <clears throat> the course of this experience is the guy who literally put this bandage on me, uh, you know, for my uh, for ankle operation I just had. Uh, he said uh, he took his, his dad to see Red Tails, and it was the first time his dad had been to the movie theater since he saw Gandhi. <laughs> 30 years ago. Yeah, good taste. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, yeah. If I'm going to see a movie, it's going to be a good movie. Baby like Gandhi. <laughs> yeah. um, so, you know, I mean, that was like in the early 80s. So I thought that bears out what you're saying, yes. that this is truly something that people feel an ownership of in a different way, you know, which is it great. Creates, it creates a very honest dialogue that can evolve into yeah. so many other things. Um, and that's and that's great. You know how many how many times have we heard people say that men don't know how to communicate? Mm -hmm. So for a, you know a ten year old kid talking to his sixty year old grandfather, yeah. and they meet somewhere in the middle and get to share amazing stories. That you know these stories of triumph are timeless. Whether like you said he's dealing with bullying or that mm. father was de dealing with some kind of racial injustice, these things coincide with each other, and. Um, yeah, that's, I never thought about that. That's, it does bridge that gap. And how often do you go to the movie theater and see someone so dark and sexy? You know like, what? <laughs> talk, like, 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 like Elijah preaching. Kelly in preaching. a plane. <laughs> Pause, but preach it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. When you first heard Neo, ne uh, yeah, Neo's voice when he was acting, did you laugh? <laughs> yeah, we are far. We are far. Okay, cut the camera. 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 Yeah. <laughs> wow, he's on fire. This one, he's on fire right here. No, but no, Rick, uh, over to you. Rick. <laughs> Absolutely not. I still don't understand a single word he said in the film, but I never laughed. He brought up his cut out. There is the five P's. It's prior preparation prevents poor performance. Mm. And when you are, we, we say it a lot in our generation, when you're on your ground, when you're knowing everything that you're supposed to know, when you have everything that's intact, the minute somebody questions you about what you know, there's an immediate rebut rebuttal in the right way. 
and whatever notion that was had about you before then is canceled. And there's a new beginning right there because you are so intelligent and you're so innately able to talk in intelligently and articulately, articulate about everything that you've consumed, all the knowledge that you've had, all the, all the, 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 the bank of hard drive that you've been acquiring over the years, you're on and you're ready. And that's another thing that, you know, the Tuskegee Airmen stood for. That was something that resonated all the way from just the mood of who they were to coming on set and knowing exactly what to do while we were there. Yeah. You know, and again, that's prior preparation prevents poor performance. Was it hard for you to change your voice in the movie to make it sound straight English? To make your voice sound right and regular, David. Is that, is that, is that Don't he sound strange? <laughs> it's strange, right? <laughs> What are you trying to say? Um, no, oh, okay. Well, that's a compliment. I'll take that. Um, you know he thinks he's smarter than everybody because he talks like that. <laughs> this is Elijah's inferiority complex. Every time See? I talk to him, he says, I know what you're doing, David. You, you think you're so smart. <laughs> <laughs> let, me, let me tell you, though. David, in my opinion, is, is one of the, the most incredible actors of our generation. Um, it's a testament to your compliment. Uh, he goes in so hard and he devotes himself at a very, 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 very uh, interesting and accurate pace that I haven't seen from a lot of people. And it's something that a lot of people on set learn from me um, personally and he's He's one of the brightest stars um, in my eyes performing on screen. I know you guys lit up every time that you saw lightning and, and you know the, the strength that he brought to the movie. So he's you know he's an amazing he's an amazing performer and you'll see so much more of him. I need I need ten percent for the rest of your career. Yeah, I'll tell you later, yeah. <laughs> All right, Andre, David, Eli, Rick, really appreciate Elijah, it. Elijah, Elijah, Eli, sorry. Eli, sorry. Eli, it's Eli, Black History Eli, Month. It's all right, it's all right, it's all right. Tuskegee Airmen, and he's gonna mess up my name on live internet. I mean, he didn't call you Negro. He <laughs> <laughs> didn't call you Negro. This is Kelly best. Kelly, it's her. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, man. congratulations on an amazing thank movie. Thank you. Really appreciate you spending the time with us here. Well, thank you guys, Nick. Thank you guys. Thank you.